Hey everybody, Jonathan Baylor back with another sane show. I'm very happy to welcome back one of uh, my favorite guests that we've had on, a really inspirational individual with an incredible story. And actually the first time I've seen him, I've, I've talked with him plenty of times, but I've actually never seen the man before. And I gotta say, I'm pleasantly surprised. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> His name is George Bryant. You know him from Civilized cavemancooking.com and you will certainly hear about his brand new book which is just going bananas it's called the paleo kitchen george welcome back to the show thanks for having me man i actually forgot that we haven't met before or seen each other's faces yes yes it was it's pretty crazy i recently was at uh, paleo fx and it's just amazing you you meet people that you've worked with for years and years and you're like oh my gosh i actually met you so you know we're one step closer to actually meeting having seen each other so i know i was gonna be there this year and i had some stuff come up and i was like you know what i'm gonna and they created a second paleo fx it's perfect we get to go later <laughs> that's awesome and well i know you've been extremely busy with your upcoming book and i want to get to that but for the folks that didn't hear your your first uh, recording on the show i was hoping your your story is is a classic story of recovery almost like a hero's journey type story so can you give us the the abridged version you're famous for probably giving the longest story we've ever heard on the first show so maybe the abridged version this time i've been practicing my elevator pitch for a while now because i'm going to be on book tour so i get a really <laughs> short version so to keep it to keep it short um so I'm 30 years old now. I just got medically separated from the Marine Corps after 12 years of active duty in July. Uh, my story started around when I was 10 or 11, really disheveled family, um, no good food values, a lot of alcohol abuse, drug abuse, verbal abuse, some physical abuse. Um, just really developed a pretty bad paradigm about myself and belief system. Um, turned to food for comfort, you know, started gaining weight, got picked on as a kid. And uh, when I was 15 years old, um, I became bulimic and that's when that that journey started and that continued for 12 years when I was 17 I um, decided that it wasn't healthy for me to stay in that environment anymore I didn't really have any role models I didn't want to end up like my parents so I decided to join the Marine Corps because let's do the hardest thing we can find just to get away as fast as possible um, so I left for the Marine Corps in 2002 July to be exact and uh, throughout my career, it was amazing. I deployed to Afghanistan. I went to Somalia, um, you know, learned a lot, met a lot of people. In 2004, on my 21st birthday, I had both my legs um, become severely injured with exercise-induced compartment syndrome. Um, that developed into having six surgeries, spending 12 months in a wheelchair, 18 months of physical therapy, where I ballooned up to my heaviest of 257 pounds and also that was the deepest, darkest time of my eating disorder and also addiction to pain medication. Mm -hmm. And after those moments and that super depth low, like just being as low as I felt I could possibly be, I had this awesome physical therapist who just didn't accept no for an answer. She was five foot of power <laughs> and just wanted to kill me every day. But um, limiting beliefs were not allowed in her presence. And that means that I just got to be pushed and stretched out of my comfort zone every day. And she really took a stand for me as a human being. And it started this whole health journey. I was still struggling with body image and the way that I looked. I was eating like a carb cycling diet, doing triathlons in my physical therapy. And I was what I like to call skinny fat. Like with clothes on, I looked great. But when I took my shirt off, like I was flubby and I was inflamed and I was bloated. I had horrible allergies, migraines, everything that you can imagine. And I really just stuck to the journey. Um, I overcame all the obstacles in my legs. They told me they were gonna amputate them. I didn't like that answer. Um, instead, I ran a marathon and did a half Ironman. Um, I was just out to be stubborn and prove the world wrong. So I got back in, stayed in the Marine Corps, um, had a couple concussions near the end of my career on deployment. And um, when I was in Afghanistan, the last time I stumbled across Rob Wolf's book, a good friend of all of ours, and I read it and I was like, this makes sense to me. Like I tried every diet, I tried every lifestyle and I could never control my emotions or my food. So I started paleo in Afghanistan right when I started CrossFit. And uh, I came home from Afghanistan. I felt better than I'd ever felt. And I'm like, I think this is it. Like this is a good start for me to overcome my eating disorder, to really regulate my health and to really make a difference. And in going paleo, I realized I had food allergies, which were affecting my migraines and my allergies and how I was feeling overall, my sleep, my mood. I went paleo for 30 days. I felt and looked better than I ever looked and most of all, I was content with how I was. I wasn't obsessing over food. I wasn't controlling it. It wasn't um, an out of control measure for me. Mm -hmm. So I decided to start a website and that was uh, three, three and a half years ago. 
Since then, I got medically separated from the Marine Corps, turned my website into a full-time job, launched an app, killing it on the website, wrote a cookbook to share my story with other people, and I just get to run around life and being happy, healthy, energetic, passionate, and smiling all the time now. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's awesome, George. I wanna, I wanna dig into you. It sounds like, obviously, you've faced a huge amount of adversity and you've come out of it very positively, but you have, when, when individuals face adversity, there's the go further down the rabbit hole into darkness. And then there's the, it's used as a platform to turn to the light. And you've actually done both. Yeah. It sounds like, what, what, was, what was the mental state change or what was the mental state that caused you to turn to the darkness and then the mental state change that caused you to turn to the light? Yeah, that's actually, wow, that's a deep one. That's a really good question um, because I was in both of them. Um, the darkest time was in 2006, um, no, 2005. After the surgeries, I was in my barracks room. I was in a wheelchair for close to 12 months. I would be in this room for a week or two at a time without people seeing me. And it was, I was really stuck in a victim mentality. Why did this happen to me? Why me? Why this? I didn't do anything to deserve this. My whole life, people have been beating me up and abusing me. Like, why do I get it again? Like, why? And that's really when it got the darkest for me. Um, and I just kept validating my story. You know, I had this belief that I was alone and that no one loved me and I was going to get beat up every day. No matter what happened, something bad was going to happen to me. So I went through life thinking that and I validated it every day. I'd keep taking pain pills. I'd keep eating pizzas. I'd keep throwing up. I'd keep ignoring people. And I never made a choice to be different. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I got to be right about myself every day. Mm -hmm. And it was a deep, dark, horrible place to be. And what really shifted for me is when my father got diagnosed with cancer. Um, I had been in and out of the deep, dark place and just kind of staying on medium ground from 2006 to 2008. And then my dad got diagnosed with metastatic brain and lung cancer on March 5th of 2008. And I lost him on December 6th of 2008. And my whole life shifted. And um, the biggest takeaway that I got is that life is urgent and life matters. And every single one of us gets to take a stand for ourselves and no one's going to live your life for you. I think people go through life thinking they're in the driver's seat mm -hmm. and in actuality, they're in the passenger seat and their belief system is driving their life. And the day that I lost my father, I made a decision that I was going to drive my own life and make a difference in my own life and other people's. And that came from a place of self-love and healing and work. And, and it wasn't a light switch overnight, but I had a glimpse of how precious life is. And I refused to ever take it for granted. And I said, I am never going to go to bed knowing I didn't give it my all to tell everybody I love them, to inspire every person I saw, to put a smile on everybody's face. And it really just sparked this, I don't know, this long burning fire that'll never be distinguished in me. Like it, it'll never go away ever. George, that's amazing. It, it reminds me of, I believe Henry Ford had a famous quote where he says, if you believe you can or can't do something, you're right. You are. And, and I mean, what, what so impresses me about your story is, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think you have a, a formal training in how to be an author or how to be a website designer or how to be a chef. And, and you just did those things and, and are now doing them at a world class level. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, just to share with everybody, when I started my website, I didn't even know what a blog was and I had never cooked in my life. Hmm. One of my biggest challenges with my eating disorders and also transitioning to this lifestyle was I literally couldn't make anything that came out of a box or my belief was I couldn't make anything that didn't come out of a box. Mm -hmm. And I was so low and I was so determined to not be bulimic and to not run and hide and live in a world of insecurity anymore that I just said, I'm going to do it. And I really don't care what gets in my way. Mm -hmm. And once I started and the momentum started rolling, there was no stopping me. I taught myself web design. I taught myself food photography. I taught myself how to cook. I taught myself marketing, social media management. And I said, I'm really going to make a difference in people's lives. And, and for me, the driving force in that is realizing that there's a bigger world outside of myself. And in order to make a difference, I get to stand for everybody's highest possibility. And it has nothing to do with me. Mm-hmm. But in order to do that, I get to love myself first and give my all to everything I do. And I get to affect a critical mass of people that really get to be a difference in this world. 
It's beautiful, George. How much, how, how important do you feel it was, or how much of a motivator was it for you? You, you in, in some ways, you went public by saying, I'm going to take this and I'm going to do it on the web in front of people. And if I stumble, you know what? Other people are going to know about it. How, how important do you think is that public and shared commitment? I think it's the most important thing ever. I think what we do as a society is we create this paradigm of right and wrong. And we have this, this existential belief that everything in life has to be right or wrong, you know, and it's horrible because when you look at life and events, everything's neutral. Mm -hmm. There is no right or wrong. There is no guilt or shame. There is no blame. It's all interpretations that we've developed in life. And for me, when I posted that post that day that I was bulimic for 12 years and no one knew, I was scared out of my mind. I was shaking. I was sweating. Like I didn't know what I was doing. But in that moment, I knew that that's exactly what I needed to do mm -hmm. because I said to myself that I'm willing to pay whatever price it takes to really overcome this and be the difference. And I think about people that I look up to, like Martin Luther King, for example. Martin Luther King didn't think the world would eventually have equality. He stood in the world as already being equal. Mm -hmm. And he was willing to stand in whatever that looked like, whether it was resistance, whether it was judgment, whether it was anger, he didn't falter. And every day he saw the world as equal. And I believe that is one of the most powerful things ever because we are so ingrained as a society that there's right or wrong, or there's a belief system, or if you eat grains, or if you don't work out, or if you're slightly obese, that somehow that's right or wrong. And I invite people to the possibility that you're perfect just the way you are. Mm -hmm. And other people's interpretations do not influence or define you who, who, or who you are as a person. Mm -hmm. And for me, I didn't realize that until I hit post. And until I got to stand in it. And I'm on the internet just like you are and everybody else's. I got Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I mean, hundreds of thousands of people. And there's days I post things and people don't want to hear it. they like, oh, that's stupid or you're wrong. And it's like, great. And then I sit there and I think about how is their day going that they get to say that to me? <laughs> like, what's going on with them? Like, how can I support them? And I, the truth is, I just get to continue to show up. Like, I get to really be clear on what I want and I get to stand in it, whatever that looks like. And 99% of the time it's joyous, it's happy, it's amazing. But there are those times where I think we are uncomfortable paying the prices it takes to get to our goals. And I personally love paying those prices now. Like I know that if I'm standing there and I'm tingling, for me, tingle equals growth. Like if it feels numb, I'm not doing something right. If I'm scared, if I'm angry, if I'm emotional, no matter what it is, that means I'm in the right place at the right time and it's time to dive head in and learn how to sew a parachute after I jump out of the plane. <laughs> I love that, brother. Well, the uh, there's a, there's a bit of an irony here and I'm I'm really excited to discuss it with you and that's you talked about, you know, this not good nor bad just being in the middle, being in the moment, being accepting. Well, for people who are maybe not as familiar with your book, they're like, "Oh, the the Paleo Kitchen." So, you know, the Paleo diets this they may have this perception as this very rigid and dogmatic approach and that in the book you make jokes about vegans and vegetarians and how they're wrong or bad. How, how do you as a luminary in the Paleo community uh, continue this message of let's not focus on right or wrong. Let's focus on personal growth. Yeah. And you know, I love it because I didn't even realize what Julie and I were creating when we started this book, but we went into the book with a, with a mindset of everything gets to be fun. And that's where we started at. We said, no matter what happens that everything in this book gets to be fun, whether it's cooking with someone cleaning with someone messing up a recipe with someone, you know, eating a overindulging in desserts with someone, the basic premise is just to have fun. And I think that as a society and, and as this paleo movement grows and it becomes mainstream, people are really getting attached to the labels and the dogmacy of it and like really attacking that. And what I invite people to is that really for me as a visionary or whoever I am in the paleo community, I want people to be awake. I want people to be present and conscious. I just don't want people to be a mindless robot making decisions based on someone else's knowledge, research, or recommendations. So if that looks like paleo or primal or vegan or vegetarian, I'm going to high five you, hug you, and support you. Like, I don't care. I have coconut sugar. We have coconut sugar in the book. We have vegan recipes, vegetarian recipes, paleo recipes that the paleo police are going to attack me for, and I will willingly go like hands crossed. <laughs> and I... I just refuse to stand in the, 
the fact that we can't have everything that we as adults and as human beings get to choose. You know, like we don't choose paleo because we want something. We choose paleo because we choose paleo. Mm -hmm. And paleo gets to be whatever you want and you don't have to justify your decisions to anybody, mm -hmm. no one. I choose to eat chocolate chip cookies because I choose chocolate chip cookies. And I know the consequences, I know the actions, I know the health ramifications, and I get to make an educated decision as a human being. Mm -hmm. You don't get to judge me for that. I don't get to judge myself for that. Mm -hmm. I get to make the decision and be in it and be happy that I made it. And that's really like, that's how this book's different. Like I know it's got paleo in the title and I am paleo or primal and my website is. And, and I just believe that if you're out in life and you're going through and you wanna have a brownie or a cookie or a cake or a pie, that doing it with whole ingredients that I can name on a one hand or two hands that are honey, almond flour, coconut flour, you know, anything along those lines that don't have 65 ingredients is always going to be the better choice. So I'd rather give you alternatives and <laughs> give you better decision making and allow you to have things that will nourish your body or reduce the amount of negative consequences that you have so you can continue on your path. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, like, I'm a little bit fired up about this, just a little bit, but I remember that when I went paleo, I was coming from a place of insecurity and bulimia. I was in the ultimate control state. I wanted it to be strict. It was whole 30 all the time. It was literally meat and vegetables, meat and vegetables. And I was not living my life. I was not happy. I was miserable. I was controlling an outcome. It was all attached to something that I really had no control over. It was miserable. I want people to love food. I want people to be in a state with their body that is joyous and happy so they can digest their food the way that they need to. I don't want something negative or a negative annotation or anchor tied to eating. I don't want something negative tied to cooking so you're afraid to get in the kitchen and you go get fast food. I don't want that. I want happy, I want fun, I want joyous, I want excited, I want energetic. Like I want you to mess up a recipe and laugh about it. <laughs> Slather some bacon on it and eat it anyways and you'll never make the mistake again, but you don't get to be wrong or don't get to think that you're a failure with our book. You get to know that it's fun. You get to know that if you make the mistake, you'll never make it again. You're gonna eat it anyways and you're gonna learn and you're gonna move forward and you get to be happy about it. Yeah. You know, you really get to shift that mindset into a place of positivity and love, not insecurity and fear. And I don't care what that looks like in the paleo community. Like, I don't care if I get ousted. I don't care if I get like deported from the paleo community. Like I'm going to stand in that possibility, no matter what, that people get to make decisions, whether you're vegan, vegetarian, standard American diet, Atkins, I don't care. But if you make one choice, if you make one recipe from my book, you're already making an informed decision and supporting yourself and your lifestyle. And you might not even know what that looks like yet. It just takes one. Like it took one for me. You know, it took one person to ask me a question about why I felt like crap. And it took one person for you to shift your mindset to a possibility. And we do it every day. And I'm just going to hold everybody there. George, I, I really love this, this message of happiness and positivity because both you and I and, and a myriad other people on the internet who are in this health field, right? Health should be analogous with happiness. Yeah. And isn't it ironic? that these supposed healthy activities that, dare I say, hundreds of millions of people are engaged in don't at all result in happiness. In fact, they result in misery. Yeah, it's, and the thing is like, I, it's so deep. Like I, we're talking about a paleo cookbook and we're getting into limiting beliefs and paradigm development as a child <laughs> for what holds people back. But really like when I got to look at my life, I was a CrossFitter, I was competitive. I was going to regionals, like I was in it, like eating paleo, doing zone, going, like I was that. I was like the guy in the vision that I always wanted to be. I had the six pack and I was perfect. And if I crossfitted, people knew I was a bad guy. Like I was just, I was in it. And I was like, I was miserable, <laughs> absolutely miserable. People ask me how I stay in shape. I have fun. I go to the trampoline park. I walk around my house on my hands. I do pistols. I roll around. I do cartwheels in the grass with my friend's kids. Like. I don't put a label or a box on anything. Movement is fun. Life is fun. I shut my phone off. I shut my computer off and I go outside. I go for a hike. I go for a run. I walk. I do handstands. I like, I just act like a little monkey and acting like a little monkey has kept me in better shape than I ever could have been in before. And I can't ever imagine going back to this. I have to be four days a week or five days a week or six days a week. 
And really it was all anchored in a belief that I had about myself that I wasn't good enough with how I looked or I wasn't good enough with how fast I could already run or I wasn't good enough with how I looked in my clothes or how much weight I could lift. And the truth is, and I said it before, we're all perfect. Right now we are perfect. And until we accept that belief, you're never going to grow ever because it's always going to come from a place of insecurity and not love. And love starts internally. Like there's no external factor that gets to influence your life. It all starts here. And then once you have it here, you get to radiate it and share it with other people. And it's not talking about it. It's not like, like just being around it. It's just being it. Like it's infectious and it's energetic and people are just attracted to you. Like one of those bug zappers that kills all the bugs. Like you're a bug zapper and you get to bring people in and energize them and support them and like motivate and inspire them. And it's just all through your way of being. It's not doing, it's being, it's having a mindset and coming from a loving and passionate and really energetic place. George, speaking of, of beliefs and being, where can we go to learn more about all this goodness? Because clearly we have, we have gotten into this beautiful metaphysical discussion here, which I'm sure we could continue on for six hours. This is awesome. But at the other end, there's also this book coming out and you've got yeah. some websites. So tell us really quickly where we can get more information. Yeah, I'm super stoked. There are recipes in the book, I promise. There's 125 <laughs> of them. Like it's not this really deep metaphysical personal development journey. There's delicious food. Um, the book is called The Paleo Kitchen. It's on thepaleokitchen.com. And uh, I'm super excited. Julie from Paleo OMG is my co-author. None of it would have been possible without her. We worked tirelessly on this thing. She flew out from Colorado for seven trips to California. We'd hammer out six, seven recipes a day. We'd photograph them all. Like we put our heart into this and we made all brand new recipes. Aren't on websites, aren't on our websites. Like we really put love and passion and fun into this. And we gave people amazing alternatives. Um, it's available at barnesandnoble.com, amazon.com, Costco's worldwide um, on release date, June 10th. And uh, I'm just super excited. You know, like I, I don't, um, here, I just, here we go. <laughs> that, that's heaven on a cover right now. It's a printed copy I have right now. And that's heaven. I got to make those pancakes like four times to get the perfect photo. And that is pure bliss and nirvana in your mouth right there. And the paleo please might get upset, but you get to eat blueberry pancakes and you get to be happy about it. And I want to high five you when you post a picture of it online. <laughs> I love it, George. Well, one more time, give us those two URLs. Yeah. So um, the, the book is at thepaleokitchen.com. And then my website is civilizedcavemancooking.com where you can find all of this stuff. You can come give me a high five or email and I'll write back and do whatever I can to help you, inspire you, laugh, smile, joy, whatever it takes. Beautiful, George. Well, hey, brother, thank you for being the change we both want to see in the world, man. That's just awesome and for sharing your time with us today. Thanks for having me, but it's always a pleasure. Listeners and viewers, I hope you enjoyed this wonderful conversation as much as I did. Certainly a passionate and enjoyable one. And remember this week and every week after, eat smarter, exercise smarter, and live better. We'll chat with you soon. Bye.